Hi, I'm Roger Monk, and I work at TI in our system applications team, working with customers to build new and innovative products based around our analog and embedded processing technologies. In this short video presentation, I'd like to give you a quick overview of one of the latest devices in our ARM-based Satara family. Now, the Satara family uses processor cores from ARM Limited and integrates them with accelerators and application-specific peripherals to build power and performance optimized solutions for a wide variety of applications. The device I'd like to talk to you about today is the AM3517. Now this device is particularly well suited to applications that require high processing performance and also want to create rich user interface experiences. Now the way we do that with the AM3517 is to integrate an ARM Cortex-A8 core including its Neon Multimedia Accelerator, alongside an Imagination Technologies 3D Graphics Accelerator, and we build that all into a piece of silicon with a rich set of commonly used peripherals for video capture, video display, connectivity via Ethernet, USB, and CAN. We also try and deliver a lot of the physical interfaces that make the device a lot easier and cheaper to use in an end system. We have analog companion devices that sit right alongside the main processor to make the system bill of materials as cheap as possible. Of course, it's not just about silicon. It's also about having software available and easy to use. The AM3517 is a new part, but many of the components that make up this device have been used on our OMAP and DaVinci family parts. So this software is available and ready to go. What I'd like to do now is to show you a demonstration of this part and give you a feel for its performance and some of the applications that we can run on it. The way I'd like to do that is by using one of our evaluation modules built by a third party, Logic PD. Now what Logic PD have done is to build the AM3517 onto a system on module together with some memory and power supply. This small module is production ready and can be used in a final end system and we can plug it into this base carrier board for our evaluation system. So we have here uh, an external Ethernet connection, uh, a USB on-the-go port, a USB host port, uh, some general purpose I.O. and user boot switches to configure the device. Uh, we have some JTAG debugging connections. Uh, here's a 5 volt power supply input, a serial console for seeing what's going on, and then our display interfaces. So we have a DVI output for a monitor and an LCD panel controller. Now over on the back of the board, we've got an SD card slot, which can be used for general removable storage. But in this case, we're going to use that to store the complete application software. Now I've created this software image on the SD card using a distribution called Angstrom, which contains a very complete set of software for this AM3517. It's also a very good starting point for your application development. Now this board here has the LCD panel, I've connected some 5 volt power supply and a serial console to my laptop and I have the DVI monitor attached for a larger display. My SD card is loaded with software so let's see what happens as I boot up the board. The hardware has detected valid software on the SD card and is starting to boot through the low level bootloader and then into a Linux kernel. I'd like to start the first of our demonstrations which is uh, a piece of software uh, commonly used in embedded systems uh, and this software is known as Qt software or Qt and this gives a very rich application framework and user interface development tool that can be moved easily between a host development PC and an embedded target. So one of the demonstrations that I like to show is one called the fluid launcher. This demonstration shows the user interface toolkit that's offered by Qt software uh, things like the scalable vector graphics, enabling me to move content around the screen, creating menus and controls. There's also a, a great little test application for showing vector font manipulation and the ability to deform fonts as they are displayed. Here is a test application called the Path Stroker, which enables us to see how Qt software enables us to render lines and shapes on the display. And you can see the system is very responsive. I'm able to use the touch screen to control the application. And it's a very rich and easy to use framework for creating 
nice looking user interface software. And one of my favorite applications is this street map viewing software. And you can see here we can very easily drag the map around the display. If we click on it, it brings up a magnifying glass and we can zoom in on areas of the map. We incorporate an Imagination Technologies 3D Graphics Accelerator on this device. This is the SGX530. So what you can see here on the LCD display is Imagination's cover flow example showing cover art moving across the display smoothly and animated with reflections. The next example shows a 3D world scene being rendered in real time and I can control the background and the texture of the objects that are being rendered in real time. And finally in this example you can see a set of different objects being rendered to the display and I can control the shape of the object and the various textures that are applied to it, all being generated and rendered in real time. It's exciting to see this now running on a high definition display. So you can see that this device is able to smoothly render at HD resolution in real time. And here's the cover flow example that we saw earlier, now running on the HD display as well. So I think it's always interesting to show PC desktop style software running on this platform so you can get a good feel for the performance of the device as well. So now this board, also from Logic PD, attaches to our base platform and gives us the ability to attach video inputs, some additional network interfaces, some user switches and our audio subsystem. I've now rebooted the board with the expansion board attached and I've connected up the audio output to the speakers in my DVI monitor. I've also connected a USB hub to our USB host peripheral on the board and to that hub I have a wireless keyboard and a USB webcam attached. And with the USB keyboard I'm able to control the GNOME desktop. You can see that the menus are very responsive and this is largely because we have integrated neon accelerated uh, pixel blitting operations for two-dimensional graphics. We have the same set of 3D graphics but now when I run them they appear inside an X11 window. But one of my favorite examples is a USB webcam example. If I run that demonstration now, you can see my face being rendered live onto the spinning cube. Now this is a full X11 desktop, so we've got a full set of applications installed here as well, including browsers, games, and word processing software. And one of the nice things, of course, about running in an X11-based environment is we can use host PC tools for connecting to the board. Here we can see we're running a, a VNC session on the target, and I'm able to control that application from my laptop. What I'd like to do now is to show you uh, some video playback using the ARM Cortex-A8 and its Neon coprocessor, using a library developed by the FFmpeg team. And first off, I'd like to show you uh, a fairly low resolution clip, but for a couple of purposes. So first of all, you can see that the video is being decoded, and it's decoded smoothly here in a window. And the second thing I want to highlight is the use of the hardware overlays. And that enables us to do things like video scaling and format conversion uh, in hardware. Now where the Neon optimization really comes into its own is when we try and decode movie content that is high definition. Hopefully this short video presentation has given you a sense of the performance and breadth of software already available on this platform from TI, our third parties and the open source community. I hope you want to learn more about this platform and the best place to go is TI's website at ti.com slash am3517.